Welcome to Cheers PA Beer Tours. In this episode, we're in Northern Pennsylvania, east of the Allegheny National Forest. The Lumberjack Trail's 16 stops host wineries, distilleries, and one of the oldest breweries still in operation in PA. First up, we're in St. Mary's PA, visiting Straw Brewery, which is celebrating 150 years of their handcrafted brews this next year. Behind me is a historic Straw family home, which now serves as the Straw Brewery Visitor Center and Tap Room. We are at Straw Brewery. I'm with Bill. He's the owner and CEO of Straw. The brewery has been in your family now for what, five generations? 150 years. 150 yep, years. My great grandfather, Peter Straub, uh, started brewing in St. Mary's in 1872. It's a sword brewery at that time. It's amazing. So, my favorite style of beer is light lager, but I don't think that's necessarily <laughs> the average yeah. craft beer consumer's favorite style. So as styles have changed over the years, what are some of the things that you have come out with recently as mm -hmm. the market has changed just yeah. within the last few years? When I came, the first new beer we made was the 1872, which was a pre-prohibition log, and we kind of did that because it felt right. From there, we started reviving a lot of the German recipes. And these are all beers we probably made pre-prohibition, maybe a little bit after prohibition, but as the American palate adapted more and more to the, the American lager and the light lagers, we moved away from that. But you know, Again, over the last 10 to 12 years, we reintroduced most of the German beers that we used to make, and then, you know, we're making our IPA now. We've made several of those. Two things I said, we'll never make an ale, we'll <laughs> never add fruit to our beer, and here we are. <laughs> I gladly say I was wrong <laughs> and we could do that. But again, it's about adapting and certainly it's about what I like and what I'm proud of, but it really, you're nothing without your customers. And I think now that we have the tap room, we have a new way to introduce and try new beers. And we always had the eternal tap, the eternal taps up at the brewery. And I would imagine that came about probably in his day, Peter Straw probably kept a keg always on tap for friends and family. And eventually we, oh, we awesome. turned it into something a little bit more formal. And that was a, you know, a little bit of a testing area, but really it was more a place where our customers could go and have one or two on us. And so since we've been open, I mean, we have a lot of locals come in, but we also get a lot of the out-of-towners that are coming through. They're visiting the Elk Center, the Pennsylvania Wilds. You know, it's, it's, there's a lot to do in this area yeah. if you like the outdoors. And so you guys have a series of beer that kind of revolves around those outdoor activities. Originally, like the... it was the Peter Straub Adventure Series, but it was different beers that we would make, give it a name, and if you look on the bottles, there'd be GPS coordinates that would take it to different places that we thought were important throughout the PA Wilds. What is the story about the pilot who... Autopilot, that was, yeah. a, that was a Pilsner beer. It was at the uh, <laughs> Kinzu Viaduct in, in the 1930s. He flew a plane in between the scaffolding that was holding it up, which was highly illegal. Somebody took a picture. <laughs> we named one of our beers Autopilot in his honor. And so the GPS coordinates take you right to where he flew the plane. And again, it's just little bits of history that I think the more people know, the richer they understand what the area has and what it yeah, offers. Absolutely. I'm drinking an IPA. It's the Hop... Hop Blaster. Hop Blaster IPA. Yeah. Is this like a year-round IPA you guys make? It is. We've done Hot Blaster Winter. We've done a whole bunch of different ones, but this is the one that we consistently make and make year-round. And yeah, it's, it's good. It's delicious. I'm glad you decided to start making ales. <laughs> and well, you're drinking... I'm drinking the lager. Lager. Which, that's usually my favorite. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> So we're here at Kinsey Bridge State Park. I'm with Holly and Matt. They work for the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources here in Pennsylvania. And we're gonna go take a walk out on the bridge. So we just came from Straw Brewery and they were telling us this neat story about a pilot who flew under this bridge. You're talking <laughs> about Odo Valentine. He told me that the day before this all happened, that he planned it out just a little bit. <laughs> So what he did, he planned on doing it on the 4th of July. He and a couple of his friends and one of his brothers came over here and they did measurements in between the towers. Then he said they came up on top and on each end of the bridge were big water barrels and the one was kind of empty. So they grabbed that and went to the middle of the bridge and dropped that barrel 
to see which way that wind was gonna carry it. So the next day, he said he came over here and he circled around a little bit and then he dipped down and when he went underneath, he tilted that plane on its side and went through. Oh my gosh. I said to him, what were you thinking when you made it through? Direct quote, phew, I'm never gonna do that again. <laughs> cool, well that's so awesome that you made that connection and then that story just made its way to the brewery and was the inspiration behind a beer. I mean, what a cool piece of history from this area. Can you tell me about the history of the bridge? Like how did this walkway come about? Yeah, so <laughs> originally the Kinzu Viaduct was built here in 1882 and the original bridge at 2,000 feet long and 300 feet tall was the longest and tallest railroad bridge in the world oh, at wow. the time of its completion. And it was built primarily to haul natural resources, mainly coal, timber, and oil from the natural resource rich region we have here to market in Buffalo. Unfortunately, later on in the history of this structure in 2003, while the bridge was under a full scale restoration project, on July 21st, an F1 tornado impacted the oh. center of the structure and caused the collapse of 11 of the 20 original towers. Oh man. Yep. So that's what all that is. That's what we Ooh. see below us here today is those collapsed towers. Now we're standing on the Kinzu Skywalk, which is part of that original structure, but this section has been completely restored and it gets inspected regularly. So it gives you great scenic vistas of the natural world that we have and the natural resources that we have, but also is a great platform for learning about the history of this area and this bridge. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you all enjoyed it. Remember to follow us online and tell us where you want us to go next. Cheers, PA.